On the 2nd of April 2000. The Finn Fellow was on her regular route from Kapelsker in Sweden to Nantali in Finland on April 2, 2000. According to the vessel's log, the vessel had departed from Kapelsker at 23.10 the previous night and had passed Jogrundet at 2.12. At the time of the accident there were three men on the bridge, the officer of the watch, the OOW, the pilot and the lookout. The officer of the watch was monitoring activity from the left-hand seat of the command console, the pilot was navigating using the autopilot from the right-hand seat of the command console, and the lookout was keeping a visual lookout. When the vessel was approaching the Scarpscar bend, both true motion radars were in use. The left radar was set to a scale of 1.5 miles and the right to 0.75 miles. The vessel motion predictor was in use on both radars and also on the ANS chart. The Nakos autopilot was set to its heading mode. Euro number 1 was the selected compass giving the heading and the Trimble DGPS was active. The vessel was traveling at full speed, about 16 knots. The Scarpscar turn had been initiated later than normal to offset the effect of the wind and a heading of 85 degrees had been selected as the next heading. During the turn, the officers of the watch monitored the course over ground on the NACO screen to detect any drift. During the turn, the leading lights of the following lead were visually checked. Leading lights is a navigational aid, forming an even line when in safe waters or as in this case in the center line of the fairway the lights were plainly visible and they were all functioning. Towards the end of the turn the Nako screen showed that the Finn Fellow was 10 to 12 meters starboard of her planned route. The vessel's programmed course followed the center line of the fairway. From observation of the leading lights and the markers above the radar screen and on the window, it was seen that the vessel's heading pointed to port of the lights. Later the officer of the watch noticed on the Nako screen that the lateral distance to the track had increased to 15 to 16 meters. He also noticed that the heading had slid to starboard of the leading lights and that the radar chart did not match the echoes. The radar. Echoes then began to turn anti-clockwise and the image became fuzzy. The radar motion predictor was still pointing directly ahead. The officer of the watch told the pilot to switch to manual steering. He realized that the rudder angle was 20 degrees to starboard and increasing. The rudder was full to starboard when the pilot switched to manual steering and turned hard to port. Immediately after his command the officer of the watch tried to switch over to the other Euro, but he was unable to do so because the Euro alarm had activated. Simultaneously the pilot said that the ship will strand. The OOW moved over to the engine controls, he zeroed the port engine to slow down the turning. The vessel was still turning slowly to starboard. The Overo harbor lights were about 20 degrees to port of the vessel's bow. The turning ceased and the OOW noticed that the stranding was inevitable. He reversed both engines to the full astern position. The vessel began to turn slowly to port but he realized that this action was too late. Prior to the impact, the vessel had turned about 10 to 15 degrees to port. The officer of the watch alerted everyone on the bridge that the vessel was about to impact with the shore. The vessel's speed had dropped to about 14 knots. The Finn fellow ran aground on the north shore of Bakholmen, in western Foglo. According to the officers on watch, two thuds were felt and the Overo harbor lights laid to starboard of the vessel's bow. Although the Finn fellow grounded at a speed of about 14 knots, the impact with the shore was surprisingly soft. The ship's officers described the incident by stating that, the grounding was soft, she swung upwards a few times, and, two soft thuds and the bow rose up. The vessel's extremely flat stem, which rose up on the shore provides most of the explanation for the soft grounding. Here is a picture taken from the grounding site, for deeper analysis see the full accident report from the Finnish Safety Investigation Authority. This video was made with material from the report and with solely entertainment and learning intentions.